Let's see what we can do here with this animation. This is the timeline version of the animation or the video style of the animation. First thing I want to do is to work with our layer a little bit here. I'm going to use my cursor keys and just position that just a little bit better. And I'm also going to put in a mask on this and just give us something to, to put in front of the video because get rid of some of these lines and things in there. I'll be doing this as a separate image just so we can then change that more easily. There's this own little layer here. Let's do the gradient tool. That's pretty good. And I think I'll go to a let me cancel that here. Go to light blue to dark blue. Let's find a little darker blue in here. That'll work. And then using the gradient tool, just put a gradient behind that. I'm now going to, again, leaving this front layer up so I can see what I'm doing, and get our layers up here. I'll come in a little bit and create a selection just inside of this shape like that. Now I'm still here on layer 2 so I can hit my delete key and cut a hole in layer 2. Let's deselect that. Now if I pull layer 2 above layer 1 I create a mask that we're looking through. So you can see there's just a little frame here. We can place a style onto that. Let's do a real fast style onto this. A little bevel and emboss. And that's just all I need to do. Just leave that as is at the default setting. Nice little picture frame kind of a thing there with our video playing in the background. We can see how that works. Just click on that layer and we'll play our video back there. There we go. Okay, so we have a little bit of a, a nice frame happening here. It looks a little nicer than we had previously. Kind of clean things up a little bit. Let's now see what we can do with the actual video in here. Notice, by the way, as I have this thing looping, it's playing just this section that we selected right down in there which is fine let's stop that I'm gonna pull this video timeline up here let's open it up a little bit and you'll see we have our video layer right here we also have layer 2 that's our frame layer right there layer 2 actually has some options position opacity and style layer 1 position opacity style and also global lighting on this one on any of these things, we can come in and put in keyframes in here. I'll just delete that one. We can put in keyframes and adjust the video. We can adjust the setting. Let's come back here. I'm going to pull these clear to the ends again so you can see the whole video. There we go. Let's come down here to the beginning. And let's just fade this video in just as an example. The opacity option right here under the layer 1 goes along with the opacity right up here. So let's say I want to have a keyframe sitting here at this position and I want to change my opacity right now. So I'm going to put the opacity here at 0. I'll just put that right down to 0. There we go. Click on this and I'll put a keyframe in right there. I'll pull my playhead down a little bit, maybe right down about here. Let's change the opacity up here now up to 100. And notice when I do that, I get a second keyframe. I have my first keyframe, which is right there. Second keyframe is right here. And Photoshop is going to interpolate between these two positions and adjust the opacity between those two positions. So notice there how that image actually fades in right there. So we can control the fade in or fade out. We also, if we wanted to, we could control the position. We can control the styling effects. So I can actually change styling effects in here. So you have a few options to make some adjustments to the video. I'll do a different little step in here. Let's go ahead and save this. And then let's bring up one of our other files. Let's see if we can bring up that water file right there. And I'll pull this out so it's floating. And then I'll just pull that back, recover that background over here just to have something else. Let's put that in the bottoms. So this becomes the background layer right there. We go. So we now have just 
a solid background layer of water and if we go back to the beginning click on play then the video will slowly fade in above that water background there it is until it reaches this keyframe at which point it's at 100% opacity and then plays at that setting. I can fade it out again if I wanted to. I can come down here a little ways. Let's just stop the playhead right about here. So someplace around in here, I want to begin to fade out again. Now, what I would need would be a 100% keyframe here and then a 0% at the end. Now, I can't just put in a keyframe by clicking on this point. It would be 100 to 100. So what I'll need to do is I'll pull it down towards the end just like that. Let's change the opacity here back to zero. That gives me a keyframe there. I can now grab the playhead, pull the playhead back up into here someplace, and I'll change it back up to 100 there. So I now have 100 to 100, and then back down to zero again. Let's see how this plays. Click the play button. So it fades in, as you can see. until we get to the 100% point right here. It will then play at 100% until it reaches this keyframe, at which point it will then begin to fade out down to that keyframe right there. It begins to fitting right now. It will then fade back out again, right back down to that 0% right there. So you place in these keyframes to control the motion over time. You can do the opacity of a layer. You can do the position of the object on the layer. Actually, actually move your position around. We can use that for doing animation, for instance. Or if there's a style, you can actually change the style or fade a style in and out using the style option. If you want to change your style, you can do one style on one layer, fade that in, different style, then fade the other style out, and so forth. So we have all of these different options in there. Each layer has controls. If we look at our layer 2 up here, which is this first our little frame up here, same controls. We actually can change the position on this. I can change the opacity on this or change the style on this if I wanted to. So we have these kind of controls that you can use with this animation layer just by putting in these keyframes. Now, if you have worked at all with other Adobe products such as After Effects or Premiere, you'll have a, a good sense of how this works. This is real simple compared to what those programs can do, but it has the same basic thought patterns behind it. On the right hand side there is a, an additional pop out menu. Now it's pretty large. I'm going to see if I can squeeze this in and let's lift this window up here somewhere and we'll see how much of that we can see. Just about everything, not quite. There we go. So we can select all of our frames. We can set the start of our work area and the end of the work area. That's these controls in here. That's the work area when we do that. So we can work with those things. We can go to a specific frame. We can allow for skip framing if you want to. You can move a layer, in point to the current time. In point, again, is this thing. Out point is the other, is the other side. So you can just move this time control here and then click to move your points to match those areas. Once you have created a work area in here by moving these sides in, you move this side in, the other side in, the white area is your work area, you could trim your document to just that work area and use that to cut off the excess animation. You can split your layer, lift the work area out or extract that and use it in a different file. You can make frames from your layers or flatten frames into layers if you want to. You can put comments in. There's document settings in here you also can convert this animation over to frame by frame animation if you need to use that or work with that frame by frame animation. Up here at the top you can choose what to show all layers, favorite layers, or and you can set favorite layers if you want to and you can enable shortcut panel keys and of course there's some panel options for just the different options over there. Just off screen there's a setting that says onion skins and we'll look at that when we're talking about the frame by frame animation. It's more useful over there. So a few additional options in here as you can see when you're working with this style of animation. It takes a little bit of
getting the knack of this. It takes a while to do this kind of an animation because you want to be building it up using different layers, additional layers, and so forth, and then creating the animation that you want. Let's just do something else in here. I'm going to make sure that my layer 3 is correct. I think we've inadvertently changed our opacity on layer 3. Yeah, we did. There we go. Let me just put that back up to 100%. There it is. As, as it should be. Let's do one more little thing in here. I'm going to put a little bit of text. We can place text right on right above the video if you want to, or you can place text, of course, anywhere else in your image. I could put text just right down inside here. Let's do a real fast text, but I'll use the same light blue. And let's change over to our type tool. And once that gets set, there we go. Click in here. There's our little type insertion point. You bring that type up a little bit to 18 points. And I think larger on that might be a way to go. Let's adjust our color here. I'm going to change this to that light blue color. That fits better. Let's give ourselves a nice large typeface. So this is as you would expect. We just have the type sitting here, the text sitting here above the solid background. That's fine. But you don't have to do that. You actually can place the text right above the video as well. Just like that. Let me play this through. I'll squeeze down our panel here just a little bit. And let's go back to the beginning. And we'll play this through. We'll wait for that fade up effect to happen. And then as soon as that does, you can see it fading up in there. And notice that the bubble text is right on top of the video. So all you need to do if you want to do this kind of an effect where you have text above video is simply to place the text onto a video line or onto a, a text layer rather and just place it above your video layer. So your video layer acts as its own independent layer and you can do all of your standard video stacking tricks as well. So you can do, use this for subtitles, use it for framing, do all kinds of little tricks. And you can run a, a pretty good length video. This is better for, for real short video pieces. If you want to do real long videos and real fancy stuff, you really should be working in a different program like After Effects. But you can do quite a bit here. And as you can see, we're just, just scratching the surface on the available options in here. But you can do you know, a fair amount of interesting work here inside of Photoshop. Let's clean this up just a little bit. Let's put in a drop shadow on this just to have something to help separate that image. And we can kind of see that. There's the drop shadow. I think I'm going to bring the size down a little bit on that, make it a little, little stiffer. There we go. Just something to give us a little more separation in there. And the last thing I want to show you is onion skinning. And that's this bit right here. With an onion skin, you can show a series of frames and then actually look at a series of frames and use that to look at animation. Actually, you can see through a series of frames. So you can adjust that level. Let's go over here to the right hand side. Now, just off screen, it says onion skin settings. And here we go. Here's our onion skin cam. We can do frames before. I'm going to do three frames before and three frames after. And let's do, we can do normal or we can do multiply or we can do screen or difference. So you have different blending modes to work with these. And then pulling this across, let's come up in here and it's a little hard to see in there. But what it does is it overlaps several frames and you can then compare your frames side by side and it works better for different kinds of animations than it does in this video. But you can then look at different or look at motion or movement in there between a series of frames and then compare that motion. I'm going to set something up here so you can actually see this. This is not really showing that well here on this example. I'll put a new layer in right here. Let's do layer 4. 
and on layer 4 at this position I'll put in a shape and then let's come actually I'm going to come down to that layer let's scroll down there's our shape right there we can open up that shape and let's put a position keyframe right there I'll come down a few frames like this and let's change that position there we go so we now have different positions between these frames and you can see the the shift happening in there between those positions right across those three frames in there and that's the onion skinning effect we're actually seeing a few frames as one fades out and the other fades up that position change right in there so that's what we're looking at is that onion skinning effect just turn that off and notice that we don't see that shift now that the shift just happens right there so without that shift that's what we would be seeing to see that 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 jump just like that with the onion skinning we actually can see how that jump goes over a few frames actually kind of fades in and fades out over those few frames so it's it's a useful tool if you're doing some frame by frame position animation this is just a little bit differently here so there's our first position right there let's just come back into right here is come over our front one one spot there we go and I'm going to move this a little bit this way and let's go forward a frame up oh, hit the wrong button there come back come forward a frame I'll move it again a little bit let's come forward another frame move it again and you can see here this overlapping we got this overlapping effect we actually can see where it came from and where we're going to on that and that's what the onion skinning does it allows you to see several frames at a time helping you when you're doing kind of a frame by frame animation in here on a timeline just like this so there we go that's that last little bit I wanted to show you the onion skinning effect let's just put everything back in here there we are and then let's just hide that onion skin